Good morning, everyone. We're going to start this morning with a <clears throat> observational exercise. Take a magnet. It's a rather intense field version of what might be at home on your kitchen refrigerator. Otherwise, nothing special. We're going to drop it down a slippery inclined plane, poster board. What's going to happen? Slide. It's going to slide. Gravity wins. We all know that experience. We're not going to deny it. I'm going to drop it down another inclined plane. This one made of copper. It's not a magnetic material. You know, the magnet doesn't stick to it. Drop it down the same inclined plane, except making it out of a conducting material. And actually, gravity is fairly well denied. Not completely, but a pretty darn good job. Why? What's going on? The deal here is that Mother Nature is very conservative when it comes to magnetic fields. She doesn't like magnetic fields to change. Okay? So if you have a magnetic field located in one point of space and you try to decrease it, magnetic the Mother Nature opposes that or would like to. If you try and increase it, Mother Nature also opposes that or would like to. How does that happen? Michael Faraday was the one who identified the physics of it and the first person to put it into mathematical representation was James Clerk Maxwell. Using modern mathematical language or symbols, it would appear in this form of what we call Faraday's law. The curl of the electric field is equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic field. What does that mean? First of all, it means that if you have a magnetic field that tries to change in time, Mother Nature is going to come in and create an electric field in the presence of that magnetic field. The fact that the curl property of the electric field is resulting from that magnetic field, it means that the electric field produced will encircle the magnetic field, wrap around it that's trying to change. The negative sign means that it will be in a direction to oppose the change if it can. What are the circumstances under which it can change or oppose the magnetic field change? Those circumstances are when there's conductors nearby with electric charges in them that the electric field can move into motion to create currents. The currents can create new magnetic field in a direction to oppose the attempted change in the pre-existing magnetic field. So we have our magnet sliding down the copper plane. When it takes, let's say, north pole facing down, magnetic field lines going this way, and it moves to a new position where there previously wasn't a magnetic field, Mother Nature's electric field will spin the charges in the copper into a current, producing a new magnetic field in this upward pointing direction, and that combined with the incoming down pointing magnetic field tries to cancel and create it to be a zero magnetic field region. That's like putting an upward facing north pole in front of a downward facing north pole. The same effect will happen on the back side, except the electric fields will produce currents, create the opposite direction so that you don't change or don't reduce the magnetic field that was there a moment ago. That's like putting a south pole behind the north pole magnetic field. And so the action of this one pointing up down and pointing down, this one attracts the magnet back, this one pushes the magnet from coming down, it slows the magnet down. Nice, pretty, cool theory. What's it good for? Magnetic braking. The same effect we just saw there. Where would that be found to be useful? Well, how about something fun, for example, to make it more fun and safer at the same time? Amusement park rides, roller coasters. At the end, you've got to slow that thing down. Friction brakes on a rapidly moving thing are subject to deteriorating performance if there's oil, dust, or water on the surfaces because it relies on friction. Magnetic braking doesn't. So you have that thing coming down the rail, and at the very end, you drop a copper or brass plate between a couple of magnets in the rails, and the whole system slows down without any fear of failing due to something on the surfaces. What else? Hybrid electric vehicles. You're driving down the hill with a hybrid electric vehicle. <clears throat> you take your foot off the acceleration, use engine braking to slow the car down, except it's not just combustion engine braking going on. Now it's on the drivetrain of the electrical side. It's an electric motor braking as well. There's conductors moving between magnets, and they help to slow the thing down. And the currents that Mother Nature produces in those conductors for this effect can be tapped to recharge the battery. So with this sort of approach, you can exploit these kind of techniques as an engineer to also be somebody just like a physician or a nurse or a lawyer that impacts the value of human health and improves the human condition. It's not just nerd city. Okay? Thank you.